In 1861, in a small village in America, four sisters were gathering in their home. The oldest one is May, the second one is Joe, the third one is Amy, and the youngest one is Beth. That night, Meg and Joe had planned to go to a dance party at Maggie's friend's house. When Joe was doing Meg's hair, she accidentally burned Meg's hair. Thankfully, her carelessness didn't cause much trouble. It was Joe's first party, so Maggie explained the do's and don'ts at the party. She should never talk too fast, flirt, or praise the boys too much, and many other rules. During the party, Joe didn't do anything besides watching her sister dance with her friends. Differently from Meg's graceful nature, Joe's character was the exact opposite. She is tomboyish, careless, and introverted. Bored with the party, Joe then looked for a quiet place to take a break. She then met a boy named Lori. It turns out that Lori is the son of a rich family who lived in front of Joe's house. The two of them then talk at length about each other. Joe told him that her father was at war, while Lori told her that both of his parents have died and he lived with his grandfather. In the middle of their chat, Lori invited Joe to dance, but because she was shy, the two of them danced in a quiet place, away from the crowd. While dancing, Meg called from the window. Meg said that she sprained her leg and couldn't walk home. Out of pity, Lori then took them both home. When they got home, while taking care of Meg's sprained leg, Joe's mother, whose name is Marmee, greeted Lori kindly. Lori smiled as he saw the rest of Joe's family. All his life, he never felt such warmth of family as Joe's family showed to him. Days passed and the Christmas arrived. That morning, Joe and her sisters gathered while telling each other their dreams. Meg said that one day, she wanted to be an actress, Joe said that she wanted to be a writer, and Amy wanted to be a famous singer. Meanwhile, Beth's dream was not as ambitious as her sister's. She only wanted to be able to play piano to entertain her sisters and mother every day. Hearing that made her sisters move and hunt her. An hour later, their mother showed up. She said that before she went home, she went to the house of their neighbors, the Hummel family, whose husband was also fighting the war. She saw that the Hummel family had not eaten since yesterday. Even to warm themselves, the children had to sleep in one bed, hugging each other. If possible, Marmee would like to give some blankets and all the food at their home to the Hummel family. Out of pity, the four sisters agreed. Across the road, Lori saw the four sisters from his window with baskets of food in their hands. He knew that Joe and her sisters wanted to share their food with others who needed more. When they came home far away, they were surprised to find lots of food on their table. Their family mate told them that before they returned home, Lori and her grandfather came and gave them all the food. Amid the joy, Marmee took out a letter sent from their father. The four sisters gathered to listen to Marmee. Even though their father was not there, this Christmas felt like the happiest Christmas for their family. The next day, Joe went to see her aunt. She visited her aunt once a week to learn the manners of noble women. Her aunt was a rich and stingy spinster, but even though she is stingy, she cared a lot about her nephews. That was why she wanted to teach Joe to behave like a noblewoman so she could get a rich husband one day. Despite all that, Joe didn't seem to want to get married. She just wanted to live like her aunt. Become an independent woman who gained all she wanted all by herself. Meanwhile, her aunt wanted to inherit all her wealth for Joe when he passed away. One night, Joe and Meg were invited to watch a play with Lori and Lori's private tutor named John. While they were getting ready, Amy asked to come with her. She really wanted to meet Lori, because she had fallen in love with him since the first time she saw him when he took her sisters home. Sadly, they didn't have enough tickets so Amy had to stay. In the theater, John kept staring at Meg. Four of them looked happy enjoying their night together, but when they got home, Joe realized that her handwritten novel had gone. Joe was sure that Amy was the one who hid her novel. Joe argued with Amy and suddenly, Amy said that she had burnt the novel because she was jealous of her. That words from Amy made Joe angry and beat her sister. Luckily, Marmee came to separate the two of them. After the situation calmed down, Marmee told Amy to apologize, but Joe didn't want to forgive her yet. The next day, during breakfast, Joe was still annoyed at Amy and kept away from Amy. Not long after, Lori came to invite Joe for a walk. Amy, who felt guilty, then asked Meg how to get Joe to forgive her. Meg told Amy to go after Joe, but don't say anything until Joe smiled. Amy immediately went to chase after Joe, but in the middle of the road, while crossing the frozen lake, the ice broke and Meg plunged into freezing water. Seeing her sister in danger, Joe and Lori rushed to save her. Thankfully, they managed to save her and brought her back home. That night at the house, Joe confided to her mother about his anger issue. Her mother told her that despite her patience, she once had an anger issue, just like Joe. Her mother said that if she tried, she was sure that Joe would be able to control herself too. Months passed and now, Joe and Amy had made up. In the afternoon, Lori took Joe and her family on vacation to the beach with John and Lori's friend Fred. Meg and John's relationship seemed to be getting closer, likewise with Joe and Lori. Joe even had a special call for Lori. Amy was not jealous of Joe anymore, but she still liked to paint Lori from the distance secretly. The next day, when Marmee was at work, she got the news that her husband, who has just returned from the battlefield, was being treated in the hospital. In a panic, the four sisters, Lori, and his grandfather helped Marmee to get ready to go to the hospital. Before leaving, Joe gave quite a lot of money to her mother. Marmee asked where she got that much money. Joe then replied that she had sold her hair to the saloon while taking off her hat. Seeing her daughter's sacrifice, Marmee was very moved. Three days passed, but Marmee had not returned from the hospital. That morning, Beth asked her sisters to accompany her to see the Hummel family. Since their mother left for the hospital three days ago, the Hummel family must be starving because no one gave them food, but instead of hearing her, her sisters were too focused on their stuff. Beth decided to leave for the Hummel family's house alone. Before she went there, she went to Lori's house first. 
she gave a pair of shoes to Lori's grandfather as a thank you for helping their family from time to time. After returning home from the Hollow family's home, her siblings showed her a piano. Turned out, Lori's grandfather gave it to her as thanks for her present to him. He also sent a letter with it, saying that the piano was nothing compared to Beth's gift. Beth was so moved she then rushed to go then hug the old man. Lori's grandfather said that Beth reminded him of his late daughter when she was just a child. Amid the chat, Lori's grandfather realized that Beth was having a fever. At night, Beth was examined by the doctor. The results showed that Beth was suffering from flu, and if they were too late to handle her sickness, Beth's life could be threatened. The doctor also explained that this disease is easily transmitted to people who had never had the flu, so for a while, Beth must be quarantined. Meanwhile, Amy, who had never had the flu, must stay with her aunt for a while. Two days later, Amy was still staying at her aunt's house. When she was painting, her aunt looked at her and found her gracious nature. Her aunt then asked her if she wanted to replace Joe to come to her place every week. Her aunt thought that compared to Joe, whose nature was tomboyish, Amy was more elegant and is perfect to be a noblewoman and become her successor. If Amy agreed to be a good girl, her aunt will guarantee her future. Hearing that, Amy, who was still innocent, smiled and happily agreed. On the other hand, Beth's condition seemed to be getting worse. Her sisters didn't know how to treat her flu. They then decided to call their mother to go home to take care of their sister. Hours later, Marmy came. With her tenderness, she managed to take control. It was late that night, but Marmy was still taking care of Beth. The next morning, when Joe woke up, she panicked because she couldn't find Beth in her bed. She ran downstairs calling for her mother, but it turned out, Beth was there with her. She was healed from her flu. Joe happily hugged her beloved sister. Months later, Christmas arrived once again, but different from last year's Christmas. This year, Lori's grandfather joined in celebrating Christmas. Suddenly, Lori showed up with a surprise. He brought Joe's father home from the hospital. Months passed and today was Meg and John's wedding day, but instead of being happy like the others, Joe was actually sad. She then asked Meg to run away with her so that Meg could chase her dream instead of getting married. Hearing that, Meg smiled and said that she didn't have to do that. Meg said that it was her choice to marry and abandon her dream. Meg said that being an independent woman doesn't mean one should not fall in love. She had made up her mind and Joe had to respect her decision, even though deep down, she couldn't accept how her sister abandoned her dream to get married. After the party, Lori invited Joe to chat with her just the two of them. At that moment, Lori dared himself to propose to Joe, but instead of being happy, Joe was angry. She said that she never wanted to fall in love from the very start. She just wanted to be an independent woman who was successful in making her dreams come true. For Joe, Lori was just a brother to her. Lori's heart was broken. Before leaving, Lori said that no matter how hard she tried to avoid love, one day, Joe would eventually fall in love. It is not humans who reach for love, but the love itself chose where to stay. With his heart broken, Lori left from there. Seven years later, Joe had grown up and moved to New York City. She never met Lori since she turned down his proposal. Joe was wanting to offer her script to a large publishing company in New York, but because woman's emancipation was not issued at that time, it was difficult for women to get jobs. Joe was forced to confess to the editor that the work that he brought was not hers, but rather her male friends. When it was read, the editor was interested. He was willing to publish the work, as long as he was allowed to change the ending of her writing to a happy ending since the editor felt that the ending of the writing was too tragic and would definitely not sell well in the market. Like it or not, for the sake of money, Joe allowed her writing to be changed. After returning to her boarding house, Joe immediately wrote a new story next to the fireplace, but because he was too focused, she didn't realize that her dress was on fire. Fortunately, warned her about her dress. That man is Friedrich, a young lecturer at a campus in New York City who also lived there. Shortly after, their landlord came and told Joe that her students were waiting for her upstairs. Besides working as a writer, Joe also worked as a private tutor. Before leaving, Friedrich asked why did she bother to work that hard when most of the women her age preferred to marry instead. Casually, Joe replied that she was not at all interested in getting married. After all, this is just a side job. Joe's main goal was to keep fulfilling her dream of becoming a famous book writer. Friedrich was amazed by her answer. That night at the theater, Joe saw Friedrich who just finished watching one of the shows. Joe was eager to chat with him again so she followed him to a bar. There, someone asked her to dance with the other visitors including Friedrich. Joe was so happy. She reminisced the memory where she danced with Lori years ago. The next evening, Friedrich secretly sent a book and a letter to Joe. Friedrich wrote in his letter that he was curious about Joe's writings and would like to see them after she finished them. That letter made Joe happy. She made up her mind to finish her work that very night. After staying up all night writing, Joe finally finished her work. She immediately went to visit Friedrich and showed him her work. She was sure that Friedrich would love her writing, but that was not what happened. Friedrich criticized her writing all out and made Joe irritated. She then burst into anger and told Friedrich that he didn't understand what she read. Moreover, he never wrote anything before. Joe immediately left from there. On the other hand, in the city of Paris, France, Amy was seen taking a stroll with her aunt on their horse-drawn carriage. She had grown up to be a beautiful woman and was dating Lori's friend, Fred. Amy told her aunt that she received a letter from her mother in the morning, saying that Beth was badly sick, but rather than sympathizing and telling her to return home to see her sister's condition, her aunt told her not to worry too much because her sisters were there to take care of Beth. In the middle of the road, Amy saw Lori who happened to pass by. She called his name and immediately ran to hug him. She hadn't seen him for years since she lived with her aunt. Before she left, Amy told Lori her address and invited him to come to visit if he had the time. 
A few days later, Jo also received a letter from Marmy about Beth's condition. Her reaction was different from Amy's. Without thinking much, she immediately returned home to check on her sister. When she saw that the whole family had gathered except Amy, she was annoyed. She grumbled all day. Her mother told her that Amy might have something to do. Her mother also mentioned that Amy had just met Lori and told her that they might come back home eventually when her business is finished. After taking off her jacket, Jo rushed to check on Beth's condition. On one side, Jo was worried about his sister's condition, but she also thought about Marmee's words earlier. She was jealous because Amy was the one that Lori met after years, not her. Jo also wanted to meet him again and fix her past mistakes. That night, when John checked his savings, he was confused as to why he ran out of money in his savings. Meg then confessed that she had made a mistake by buying new clothes for herself and the children. Meg tried to apologize. John didn't say anything, but that made Meg feel more guilty. She said that she was jealous when he saw his friend shopping for new clothes, so she bought some too. Hearing that made John disappointed. Meanwhile, in France, Lori came to visit Amy while she was managing her paintings. Lori asked when would she make an exhibit for her paintings. Amy replied she has stopped painting because she realized that her painting was not pleasing to see. She just waiting for Fred to propose to her, then the two of them will get married. During the chat, Lori was mesmerized by Amy. She looked prettier than back when they were younger. In the middle of the chat, from the window, Amy saw Fred coming. Before welcoming Fred, Amy asked Lori how she looked. While smiling, Lori said that she was stunning. Days passed. When the two of them met again, Lori asked Amy to paint him. After finishing the painting, Lori accidentally saw an old painting of him. Amy said that he painted it back when they were on vacation on the beach seven years ago. Lori realized that Amy had feelings for him for years, but he never realized that. At that very moment, Lori immediately dared to propose to Amy and told her to leave Fred if she still loved him. Hearing that made Amy cry. She knew that she was just a release after Joe rejected him. Amy immediately left him alone. The next day, Amy's aunt told her that Lori had just come to say goodbye. Lori had planned to move to London and would not come back again. Amy didn't say anything. Deep down, Amy still had feeling for Lori, but she didn't have the heart to hurt Fred's heart. Amy had a dilemma, until finally, in the afternoon, when Fred proposed to her, Amy refused his proposal. Hearing Amy had rejected a man as rich as Fred, her aunt was shocked. On the other hand, Joe took Beth to the beach. Joe told Beth that she would stop writing and was going to focus on taking care of her. Hearing that, Beth disagreed. Beth said that she wanted her sister to continue writing if she wanted her to be happy. After that, Joe was determined to write the best novel story he had ever written. The next day, when Joe was taking care of Beth, she saw Meg and John in front of their house. At first, Meg thought John was going to scold her again about the new clothes she bought yesterday, but it turned out that John was sorry and promised that he would try to find extra money so that Meg could buy the nice things. She was so moved. She then said that John didn't need to look for a new job. As a wife, she should be more grateful to accept whatever his husband's condition was. From inside, Joe was touched to see what happened between Meg and John. She was happy for them, but suddenly, Beth had seizures. Her sickness was much worse than what happened seven years ago. That night, Joe slept next to Beth while crying and kept holding Beth's hand. Joe kept telling her to stay alive and fight for her health. The next morning, Joe was surprised when she couldn't find Beth in her bed. She immediately ran downstairs to the kitchen to look for her. There, she only found her mother, crying about something. Turned out, Beth had died. After Beth's funeral, Joe packed up her things. Shortly after, Marmy came and the two of them then had a long chat discussing Joe's dream to become a famous writer, but Joe didn't seem interested at all. She said that she had been alone for too long and that she might need someone to lean on. She said that if Lori came and proposed to her, she will accept his proposal right away. The only thing she needed was to feel loved. She didn't even care if she could love the man or not. Marmy told her that she still had a lot in life, and it will definitely be much happier if she could also love the man. Joe couldn't say anything to respond. Meanwhile, Amy was about to go home when suddenly, Lori showed up. While crying, Amy said that she was sorry for not coming earlier to see Beth. She then invited Lori to come home together, but Lori refused. He had promised himself to stay away from Amy. Amy told him that she refused Fred's proposal the day before. Hearing that made Lori so happy. He kissed her right away and proposed to her. In the evening, when Joe was sleeping, Lori woke her up. He and Amy had just arrived. Joe smiled and hugged him, but her smile immediately disappeared when Lori told her that he and Amy had just married. Lori told a long story about his meeting with Amy and how they both decided to get married on the way home. Joe was shocked. He went out to calm his mind. Outside, he saw Lori's grandfather. When Joe asked what he was doing, he explained that he didn't have the heart to go inside. Since the first time he met Beth, he had considered her his granddaughter. When he found out that Beth had passed away, he was heartbroken. Hearing that, Joe held his hand and said that even though she was not Beth, she didn't mind being his friend too. After he calmed down, the two of them went inside. At night, Joe couldn't sleep. She kept remembering Beth's last wish. Even though her writing couldn't cure her, Joe was eager to grant her sister's last wish. That very night, Joe started writing her best novel. For days, Joe continued to write without taking a rest, until finally, Joe's novel was finished. When it was time to send it to the publisher, Joe confidently wrote her name in there. She was sure, even though she was only a woman, she could be as great and even greater than men. The next day, while having breakfast, Joe's parents told her that someone was waiting to meet her. Turned out it was Friedrich. She was happy to be able to see him again. They spent the rest of the day together with the family. 
When Friedrich was about to go home, he said that he was sorry and said his purpose to criticize Joe's writing at that time was only because he wanted to motivate Joe to be able to write even better. Joe just smiled as she said that she didn't care about the problem anymore. She was just so happy to see Friedrich again. When Friedrich left, everyone asked why Joe didn't express her feelings. They knew from the look in her eyes, Joe must have liked him. Meg and Amy kept forcing her to chase him. They even took her to the station. At the station, when Joe met Friedrich, she immediately said that she loved Friedrich. Thankfully, Friedrich shared the same feeling with her. They then shared a very romantic kiss. Years later, their aunt passed away, but surprisingly, their aunt actually left all her wealth to Joe. Amy didn't look jealous at all. She was actually happy because after all, Joe was still her sister. Joe then turned her aunt's big house into a school. All the family helped take care of the school, including Friedrich. Not only that, but the novel written by Joe was also in the process of printing. The novel she wrote for his late sister, Beth. The novel that told the story of her family's life journey. A novel that she entitled Little Women.